Hello, good afternoon and welcome to our second Tuesday chat from The Assumption. I hope you're sitting down, have a cup of tea in hand and sit back now for the next 25 minutes to listen to our own historian in residence, Cathy Scuffle from Dublin City Council and she's going to do a, a quite animated conversation about Dublin place names and, and a few from Ballyfermot also. Again, thank you to Father Adrian for opening up this magnificent church to us. Um, I know you can't be here, but it really is magnificent. So sit back and enjoy. Thanks, Cathy. Thank you very much, Miriam. And again, I just want to add my thanks to Miriam and the community development team and also to Father Adrian for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, I work as historian in residence with Dublin City Council, so it's my job to try and bring history to local communities so that you feel a sense of place and a pride in where you're from. Dublin is our city. It offers us so much. So let's take a little journey through the place names of Dublin. So as Miriam said, get that cup of tea in your hand now, put it to one side, because I want you to close your eyes just for a minute and make a little picture in your head. So if you can imagine a ring of mountains tapering to a gentle green hills and sandy ridges and a little stream rising in this mountain, it makes its way through fields and meadows, crashing through a wooded valley, and then it forms an island just before it meets a larger river as it works its way to the sea. Now you can take the cup of tea up and open your eyes because I'm going to explain what that little picture is. That is actually how Dublin looked to the first settlers. And I'm going to prove it to you by looking at some of the place names we have around us. So I'm sure you've heard of, well, for example, the Dove Lynn. Well, Dove Lynn is Dublin. And that's where that little river, which is the River Poddle, where it joined the River Liffey, very near Christchurch. It formed a, a, a wide, marshy uh, outlet at that point, And that's what gave our city its name. But what about things like, well, the Green Hills? I'm sure you've heard of Green Hills between Walkinstown and Talla. So that's where that name comes from. It shows where the Dublin mountains were easing into their hills before they became a sandy ridge. Now, a sandy ridge in Irish is a drumnock. Drumnock, today we call it drimne. So drimne is actually a word from Irish that describes the landscape. We had a little crooked glen. Well, the crooked glen is the crumglinna in Irish, and a crumglinna is crumlin. So even in Drimna and crumlin, we have two of the names that describe the landscape. And of course, the little river puddle itself, well, that's none other than the Kamishka, or today we call it Kimmich. So again, through three fairly local place names to us here in Ballyfermot, we can find a description of the old landscape of Dublin. You remember I said that the Little River formed an island? Well, that island is where we have St. Patrick's Cathedral. The island is, is actually in the real, the real name of the cathedral, because the cathedral is called St. Patrick's in Insula. That's the proper name for it, which means St. Patrick's on the island. And on old pictures from that part of Dublin, you can actually see Cross Poddle as being a place name. So the large river that the Little River met, of course, is none other than the River Liffey. And then the River Liffey made its way to Dublin Bay. You have thundering, bellowing waves on the seashore when it was a big, wide open bay. They sounded like bulls, the sound of bulls to the original settlers. And it's from that that we get places that today we would call the Meadow of the Bull, or Clon Tariff, the Clun Tariff. Tariff is the Irish for a bull. And that's, of course, where we get the Bull Wall and the Bull Island. So all of the, the bulls that we have in that part of Dublin are all connected to the description of the landscape. 
We have a few others as well, uh, quite close to us here. For example, we have uh, Kil Killeen and Kilmore, and they're references to old churches that would have been in our landscape. The Killeen, in fact, would have been the early burial place for the small children and the unbaptized of the city of Dublin, and they would have been brought out to the then rural suburbs around Ballyfermot, and the burial place of the young is Killeen. Over on the north side, of course, we have a few other names that give us different uh, references to the, the places that we might know. So near Hoth, for example, we have a place called Balscadden. And if I broke that down, Balscadden means the town of the herring. Anything with Bally in front of it usually means town. And of course, I can't leave out Ballyfermot, Ballyadermot, a reference to an old chieftain from the area. There were four main roads out of Dublin in ancient times. It was the meeting place of a number of main roads. One was called the Schlie Malukra, that came from the north. The other one was the Schlie Dala, that today we'd know as the Nace Road, or you know the road that goes up through Cork Street and Dolphins Barn and out through Crumlin and eventually meeting the, the, the Nace Road. That was the Schlie Dala. The other one was the Schlie Moor. Now, the Schlie Moor would be near us here. It would have headed out through Chapel Izzard, out along by the River Liffey, out that direction, heading west, going the Galway Road, if you like, today, more or less following that one. And the final one was the Schlie Coolen. And the Schlie Coolen went out through places like uh, Harold's Cross, headed to the mountains. And, of course, out in the mountains, we have a place called Glen Cullen, which takes its name from Coolen, Glen Coolen, and we also have a Ballycullen in the Dublin Mountains too, which is another reference to that place name. Any of the Donnies are really interesting. The Irish word for a Sunday is a downock, and we, we made that into English by turning it into a Donny. So we have Donny Brook, the town of St. Brock, or the a church of St. Brock founded on a Sunday. Every church in that area would have been founded on a Sunday. We get the other ones like Dunamid and Dunny Kearney. They're all the same connections. Towns that were found, founded on a Sunday around a monastic settlement or around a church itself. And of course, near Patrick's Cathedral, we have one of two sites in Dublin that claim to have St. Patrick's Well. The other one, believe it or not, is nearer Nassau Street, near Trinity College in Dublin. Now, if I was to bring you to Ship Street at the back of Cass uh, Dublin Castle, you'd look at it and say, well, I wonder what they mean by ship. But in actual fact, the clue is in the Irish name there, which is uh, uh, Shrod na Carig, which means Sheep Street. So we got that one really wrong. It should actually be Sheep Street that we're looking at, not Ship Street. And it makes sense. How would we get a ship up the hill, up beside Dublin Castle, when you think about it itself? The gateways and the uh, entrances to Dublin are also commemorated. We, we have a lovely one down behind John's Lane Church called Wormwood Gate, and that was actually the old Gathagorman, the Gorman's Gate into Dublin City. Now, when the Vikings came to Ireland, they had a huge impact on our place names in Dublin. Up in Glen Cullen, we have a lovely one, uh, Boran Araltry. There was a a, a tribe of the Vikings called Harold, and they all settled along the Schlie Cool. And you remember the road that went out through Harold's Cross? Now you know why it's called that. It led to Harold's Grange. And that Boran Araltry is actually Bohar na Araldi, the town of the Harolds. So that's where they would have settled up in the Dublin Mountains. But the other interesting ones, and your little bit of Scandinavian that you speak every day, are included in things like Hoth, which is the Scandinavian word for a headland. The Scandinavian word for an island is I, that magic word, E-Y. So think for a minute about Daki, E-Y, on the end of it. Think of Lamb Bay, A-Y. Okay, same word, meant the Lamb Island. And of course, my favourite of all, Ireland's Eye. Ireland's Eye, just at the mouth of Hoth Harbour. And of course, the other one that we have, the other Scandinavian word we have, is Skerries. Skerries means rock. It's a Viking word for a rock. 
When the Vikings left Dublin, they were driven out just after the Battle of Clontarf. That's for another day. But you get the idea. The whole political shift to Dublin changed to the Normans. Normans loved to go on pilgrimage. Their place of pilgrimage was Santiago de Compostela in northern Spain, still a place of pilgrimage today. I'm sure some of you have done the Camino, have visited Santiago. Think of all the places in Dublin we have connected to St. James. The big one down the road, St. James's Hospital, takes its name from the old pilgrim route through Dublin. That parish was the largest in Dublin, St. James's Parish. It was the meeting place for all the pilgrims before they took the big sea journey across to northern Spain. That would have been nearly a year out of your life at that time. And the Normans looked at it by a way of saying they could atone for their sins by going to Santiago, offering up a year of their life so that way they would be saved and would have their passport to go to heaven. And of course their passport was their scallop shell. And of course the scallop shell can still be seen in the logo of James's Hospital if you look at it really, really closely. Near James's we have another area that was associated with an abbey and that's the abbey of Thomas Court and Denor. So I'm sure some of you know of Thomas Court, all of you will have heard of Thomas Street. So Thomas Street takes the same from that old, old abbey. And of course Thomas Court Bon in Marble Lane is another one which takes the same from the abbey itself. As time went on, a few hundred years later, Henry VIII dissolves all the abbeys. And one of the abbeys to go is our Abbey of St. Thomas. And he hands it over to a friend of his, the Earl of Meath. And they bring all their surnames to that part of Dublin too. So that's how we get Meath Street, Earl Street. And it's how we get other little terraces like Lauderdale Terrace and Tyrrellstown Terrace. When you're married into the Earl of Meath's, you've got a terrace of houses called after you. That refers to one of the Lauderdales who grew up in Tyrrellstown Castle in Scotland. As we move on again, if we look at places like Anglesey Street down in Temple Bar, well, Anglesey Street is called after the tongue twister of the day. So listen to me carefully as I bring you through this one. It's Arthur Ansley, Earl of Anglesey. That's not easy to say, but Arthur Ansley also gave its name to Ansley Bridge on the north side of Dublin. Now, earlier on, you heard me mention Marabone Lane. This is a great example of how Dubliners speak French, because it's nothing to do with marrow or bone. It's actually to do with Marie Le Bon. And thankfully, Dublin City Council got it right when they put the street sign up because when they put it in Irish, it says Lana Wira Wa, Our Lady's Lane. It's a reference to the French community that came to live in the Liberties, the Huguenot people. And we have a lot of Huguenot surnames still in Dublin, like Lestrange and Devereux. They're all uh, Huguenot names connected to it. Also in the Liberties, just off the tenters, again, that's connected to the Huguenots, where they stretched out their cloths to dry. But just there, we have another little place called Cow Parlour. That's the Cou Parlay, the Hem Cutters, another French word that we really had a go at when we speak Dublin. And we really managed to turn the French into words of our own. So Cow Parlour has nothing again to do with parlours or cows, but everything to do with the French the coup parlay, the hem cutters of the famous weavers. Now I'm sure you've all heard of Guinness, but think for one minute. Do we have a Guinness Street? No, we don't. But we do have a Rainsford Street. And Rainsford Street is called after the man who had the brewery there first. Unfortunately for Mark Rainsford, he lost it through bankruptcy and Arthur Guinness came along and bought the bankrupt brewery. So the whole area is Guinness's, but the little street in there is Rainsford Street after the man who lost the fortune that Guinness ultimately made. Our British colonial past is still around us too, in places like Portobello. Believe it or not, that commemorates the Great Battle of Panama, uh, headed up by Admiral Vernon. 
and we culled everything after the great victories of the British Navy at that particular time in our history. We also commemorate some of our builders and developers. So Henry Dawson, he gives us Dawson Street. But we'll hear a little bit more about Henry Dawson. He was known as Harry, so that's Harry Street, Dawson Street. He worked for the Duke of Grafton. That's where we get Duke Street, Grafton Street. And he had a sister called Anne. So we made sure to call everything about everybody connected to them. The Grand Canal, when it was built, it had a huge impact on our whole area. Every one of the bridges were called after a director of the Grand Canal Company. But Dublin being Dublin, we made sure that nobody's ego would get too big. So the bridge at Rialto should actually be called Harcourt Bridge after the Grand Canal chairman. The locals thought the original bridge that was there looked a little bit like the Rialto Bridge in Venice. How? I don't know, but they did. And that's how the whole area of Rialto got its name. Another bridge that we could mention, of course, is the one at Island Bridge, just down the road from the church here. And that was a main crossing point over the River Liffey. It was important for another reason. It carried the all-important water supply from the south side to the north side. So embedded in that bridge is an important water main for Dublin. What about the 40 foot in Dublin, one of the, the bathing points out near Sea Point? A lot of people say to me, ah, oh, Cathy, that's to do with the depth of the water. It's not. It has to do with Queen Victoria's 40th Regiment of Foot that was installed in the fort above the bathing place itself. So anyone who says they're going to the 40 foot, now you know why it's really called that. Think of some of our heroes in history, like Robert Emmett, for example, executed outside St. Catharines and Thomas Street. But we have Emmett Road in Inchicore called after him. We have a few other things as well commemorating builders and developers. Even, even that great shop in, in Mary Street, uh, Arnott's, um, Arnott's of Henry Street is uh, commemorated in a little street down near the Old Meath Hospital called Arnott Street. He built the houses in that area for his workers and for the working people of Dublin. He teamed up with a man called James Lombard, so we have a Lombard Street around the corner from there too. Moving into more recent times, I mentioned the tenters earlier, but when, when Dublin City Council built the new houses in and around the tenters, they adopted a fantastic new idea for naming roads. And we went back to the Celtic revival and called the roads after things that were important to us in society. So we got things like Madden Road, the man who founded UCD, the Gilbert Road, the Gilbert Library in Pierce Street is actually the archives of the city. There's other roads in that area that are so important and so connected to the Celtic revival, the first houses of the Irish Free State. We continued the naming idea then when we built places like Drimna and called all the roads up there after the mountains and the hills of Ireland. So that's how we get Morn Road, Galtymore Road, Schlievenamon Road, a Keeper Road, all called after the mountains. And come with me down to Ballyfermot, right where we are at the moment, and you get things like celebrating the Siege of Limerick in Thomond Road and Sarsfield Road nearby. The rest of the estates then commemorate the west of Ireland in things like Lockhorn Road, all commemorating the beauty spots of the west of Ireland all around Connemara itself. Up in Walkinstown, we get the musical roads uh, called after all the composers like Thomas Moore and Dowland and Hughes and Balfe. Then nearby, we even have the heavenly roads, just beyond the Walkinstown roundabout, where all the roads are called after the saints. So we get St. Peter's Road, St. Patrick's, St. James, all connecting, all having a theme, all linked together. But the funniest and quirkiest of them all is probably those few roads that we have on the north side of Dublin, when they built a brand new housing estate in Coolock in Dublin. Built around 1969, 
all the roads in this particular estate are called after the moon landings. So we get Aldrin Walk and Armstrong Walk. They were the two men to walk on the moon. They did away with the Collins Rendezvous because it was too complicated of a name to include in anybody's address and changed that to Woodfield. So it changed the whole name of the particular road itself. So even in a small housing estate, we can find things that connect us to the past and even to the international uh, world itself. The newest road that I know of in Dublin at the moment are a line of houses that have been built to replace St. Teresa's Gardens in Denor Avenue in Dublin. And that new road has been called Margaret Kennedy Road. Margaret Kennedy was a member of Come and Amon and was actually one of the 77 women who fought in Marabone Lane during the 1916 Rising. It's not the only name that we have in the area that's connected to that time. If we look at Cant Fort in Mount Brown, all the roads there are called after volunteers who lost their lives in the South Dublin Union. That's James's Hospital again during the Rising. And of course, on the other side of the Lewis Line, we have another estate on James's Walk. Built around the 1918, 1919, all the roads there again commemorate Con Colbert, Michael Mallon, Tomas Clark, and we have one other called after James McCarthy who was connected to the Marbone Lane garrison. So even in a small little terrace of cottages and houses, again, we can find a little bit of Ireland's history hiding in plain sight. I can't leave out Concolbert Road, which leads us out to Ballyfermot here, again called after Concolbert from the 1916 Rising. Now, just before we finish it up, because I've just brought you through the history of Ireland by looking at the place names of Dublin, I'm going to draw your attention to one, one that's down in the Docklands, and it's called Blood Stony Road. And this one had me puzzled for quite some time. I was trying to figure out what did it mean, how was it connected, who, who was it connected to. And it turns out that it's called after a man. It's called after Bindon Blood Stony, who lived in, who originally came from County Offaly. But he was an amazing marine engineer, and we owe it to him for the way he built the walls that enclose the River Liffey and make the city, give it its character, make it what we know today. He also developed the first ways of using concrete, precast concrete in the city. That was the beginning of the modern developments themselves. He was also responsible for designing the diving bell. His diving bell is one of the smallest little museums that we have in Dublin. And again, if you happen to be down around the Docklands, well worth having a look and thinking about what it might have been like for somebody to enter that for the very first time as they went down into the water as they were building the walls of the River Liffey himself. Bindon Bloodstoney is buried in Mount Jerome Cemetery in Dublin. To him we owe a lot, but we also owe that quirky little road that we have down in the Docklands called Bloodstoney Road. I hope you've enjoyed our little chat, our little journey through Dublin history as we look at the place names of Dublin. I could go on forever, but I better not. I promised you, you need that second cup of tea. Thank you all very much. Hope you enjoyed it.